During my time on YouTube, I've kept some of the most aggressive predatory fish in my fish room, some that you may have never seen, such as this super aggressive water cow goby, or maybe this golden knife fish, or the Jack Dempsey, or could it be this feather fin catfish? I don't know, maybe this pleco, which is not aggressive at all. But today, we're going to put something in here even more aggressive than this three foot arowana, and it is... Hey, what's going on everybody? Well, welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris and this is the Christopher Scott channel. And what we like to do around here is we like to keep fish and reptiles and all sorts of things like that. So if you happen to be new, welcome to the channel. Thank you so very much for coming along to check this video out for everybody else. Welcome back. Now, based on that intro, we've kept all kinds of crazy predator fish here in the fish room and today we're going to be keeping some new types of predator fish but we need to grow these guys out because they are tiny little babies as you saw so what we're going to be doing today is focusing on a diy bin grow out setup for our new predator fish this is about a 20 gallon container right here which will be perfect to start these guys out in which obviously it's not going to house them forever these particular type of fish get massive if they happen to grow that size which i'm not sure if they will but if they happen to, well, we're, we're going to address their home at that point and see what we're going to do with them. If I have to dig a, you know, 20,000 gallon pond in the backyard with a shovel just to be able to house these things if they get too big, then that's what we'll just have to do. So with that, I want to go ahead and start getting into building out this DIY bin grow out system for these predatory fish. And what we're going to start with, like I said, is going to be a 20 gallon plastic tub that you can get at walmart or any other place like that this particular one was about five dollars so all in all this is going to be a very cheap diy build as well that anybody could do at home for growing out any type of fish it doesn't have to be predator fish it could be any fish before we actually get started i wanted to talk about one thing and that is the csbrand.com if you have not gone and registered your email address right in the middle of the page go ahead and do that because when i launch this website in about one week i'm going to pick one random email address i'll send you an email and i will get your information to send you a free piece of merchandise from the website such as this arowana t-shirt that i'm wearing today the other thing is is if you take a look at this tank right here this is the tank that i escaped a little while ago and i've put fish in there so if you haven't watched this video make sure you go back and watch this video but what i'm showing you are these plants so i've got all kinds of plants in the fish room and what i want to know from you guys is would you be interested in possibly buying plants from me off of my website at the csbrand.com if you possibly would or if you'd be interested at all make sure you comment below and let me know because i'm going to start selling them i have a distributor who is fairly priced on plants and i think i could bring a quality product at a lower cost than a lot of other people so make sure you comment below and let me know all right well with that let's get back into this so what we're going to start with once again is this 20 gallon plastic bin and we're gonna have to lay some substrate in here what i'm going to be using for substrate today is one of my favorites here in the fish room and that is pool filter sand now pool filter sand is so cheap so all in all we're at like five dollars for the bin and we're using about three dollars worth of pool filter sand so as you can see this is going to be super cheap so i'm just going to go ahead and pour this pool filter sand right in here now the water's dirty and such which is fine because it's not going to be that big of a deal we'll get all that dirt out in just a minute we just want a nice layer right here on the bottom of this bin so now that we have our substrate in here i'm going to use my trusty little substrate paintbrush here and we're just going to push this stuff down this is not going to be some kind of crazy aquascape because i don't know once again if you're new to the channel you may not know this but i love doing these crazy aquascapes that are just insane i think um you know people seem to like them you can see some of these here on the screen I mean, we've done quite a few different aquascapes, but like I said, this particular one is not going to be some crazy aquascape. This is just going to be a basic setup because we just need to house these guys for a short period of time while we're growing them out. We'll probably have to upgrade this within the next couple of months easily 
because these fish do in fact put on size extremely quick. So we have our substrate pressed down into this bucket here. I wanna make sure that this thing does not get too heavy for me to be able to move it right now. It's pretty light, so it's not a big deal. But when we start adding this rock and stuff, we're gonna have to get this into the place it's actually gonna go. So one of the things I wanna do inside of this tub is I wanna make sure that they have plenty of places to hide because these particular types of fish like to stay down in the dark, murky water covered up by different things. So we're gonna give them a few different hides where they can stay in a place where they feel safe. So we're gonna use some of these larger kind of river stones, building up some area for these hides. Now, as far as what I'm using for the hide itself is just some sandstone, which is just a flat, actually, it may even be considered like flagstone. It's just a flat surface rock that will easily stack as a hide. And we're just gonna place this right in here just like this. I mean, it's it's literally not that much. It's just for them to be able to get up underneath and have a place to swim in and feel safe. So we'll put one there. We're gonna go ahead and put another one right over here, just kind of randomly in the middle here. Once again, just using the same exact type of rock. And then finally, we're gonna add one back in this corner as well. Like I said, this is really just so they have some places to get in and they feel safe. They feel a lot safer being up under things and not out in the open, especially as babies because, well, predator fish will come after them and get them. So now that we have the hides placed, this thing is gonna start getting a little heavy. So we wanna go ahead and move this to the location it's gonna go. All right, so now that we have this where it's gonna go, we need to go ahead and fill this thing with water and get the filtration set up. So one of the things I'll do when I'm using a dirty substrate, I mean, pool filter sand is pretty clean, but it will get dirty and it'll get your water dirty. So one of the things I like to do is make sure that I fill it up on top of a paper towel like this, and it helps keep the dust and debris from getting disturbed as the water goes into the tank. Now, as far as filtration goes, we're gonna be using a sponge filter, which I've not put in here yet because we have to first dechlorinate this water. And what I'm gonna be using to dechlorinate is our fish room favorite, and that is API Stress Coat Plus. So now I wanna go ahead and get this all mixed up in here and make sure that everything is nice and dechlorinated before I put in our filter media because we don't wanna kill the beneficial bacteria that exists in our filter media. We're going to be reusing a sponge filter and I'm gonna go ahead and drop the sponge filter setup itself into this. However, I have taken the sponges themselves off, which is what holds the beneficial bacteria. I just wanna go ahead and get this thing going so we can get the water moving. So everything's looking good. We will let this water kind of move around and get nice and dechlorinated. Then I'll come back in and add the sponges on this sponge filter setup. This sponge filter is also something else I'll be selling on my website. So if you haven't visited the csbrand.com, make sure you do that now. Now that our water has been mixed up nicely in this, we're gonna go ahead and add our pre-cycled filter media, which is just the sponges that were off of this sponge filter. I'm gonna add those right back in to this setup here. Now, even though we're using pre-cycled filter media, we're gonna use another product from API that we like, which is API Quick Start. And all it does is jump start the cycle in the tank. So it's just giving a little bit of extra beneficial bacteria for it to make sure that that cycle is started and we do not kill these fish when we put them in here. And now we will just begin cup acclimating these fish. Well, without further ado, let me introduce you to our new predator fish. That is a red tail catfish and a tiger shuffle nose red tail catfish hybrid. Beautiful specimens of fish. So let's go ahead and get these guys in. Catfish has already found his home under here. Tiger Shovelnose Hybrid has also found his home. 
And I think they're gonna be the best of friends. You gotta admit, for $5 for a bin, about $3 worth of sand, honestly about $3 worth of rock, you're talking about $11 for this setup, plus the sponge filter. I mean, this is like a $5 sponge filter with an aerator, and the aerator was maybe seven, eight dollars. So we're talking about less than $25 for this setup, guys. Super easy, simple setup that you can actually do with any kind of fish. It doesn't necessarily have to be a predator fish, which of course, we love the predator fish, but you could do this with, I mean, I've done this with guppies. I've done this with all kinds of things. So super simple, easy setup. And these guys look fantastic. Well, we're gonna go ahead and grab a few of these floating plants. And what we want is just a couple of pieces of frog bit here out of this established betta tank here. Just drop that in there. And then what we're gonna do is grab some of this duckweed. I'm not really sure where I got duckweed from. I've never kept duckweed in any of my tanks. And then all of a sudden one day, it showed up and it grows like crazy. So we add some of that in there too. And before too long, this whole thing will be taken over by duckweed and frog bit. But remember, like I said, if you guys would be interested in buying any plants like this Madagascar lace bulb or maybe some Bacopa or maybe some Ambulia Christmas moss, maybe some dwarf aquarium lilies or jungle val. I mean, any kind of plants that you've seen on my channel before, make sure you visit the csbrand.com, put in your email address, not only for a chance to win a piece of Christopher Scott merch, but so you get notified the moment that plants go on sale on my website, the csbrand.com. Well, as we see right there, we have the little red-tailed catfish. He's out swimming around next to the filter. The, you can't really see him, but the tiger shovel nose hybrid is actually up underneath this hide right here. We now have our plants in here, filtrations running. Everything looks fantastic in here. So this thing is good to go. All right, guys, well, this little DIY grow out tub for these monster, massive predatory fish, which aren't so massive and monstrous right now, but they will be soon. This thing has turned out fantastic. Now make sure you go ahead and subscribe and turn on your notification bell so you can follow along the journey with growing these two fish out. I want you to go ahead and drop a couple of names in the comments if you don't mind, because I'd like to name these two fish just simply because they're gonna be around for a long while. So make sure you go ahead and comment that. Also, if you did not see in the beginning, we are having a giveaway at the csbrand.com. Just simply enter your email address in the middle of the screen. And when I launch my site in about a week, I'm gonna pick one random person from the list of people that have signed up with their email address. I'll email you and I'll give you instructions on how to claim a free piece of merchandise just for being a part of the launch. Thank you very much for all the support. Also watch for plant sales to go up and live on the csbrand.com as well. I really, really am truly grateful for each and every one of you thank you so much for coming along on this journey with us here on the christopher scott channel and with all of that we will see you next time